Okay, lesson three in our study of the transport layer. Based on the textbook Computer Networking, a Top-Down Approach by Jim Kuros and Keith Ross. In the last lesson, we were talking about multiplexing and demultiplexing at the transport layer. So we'll just pick up where we left off. To understand TCP demultiplexing, we have to take a close look at TCP sockets and TCP connection establishment. One subtle difference between a TCP socket and a UDP socket is that the TCP socket is identified by four fields. Source IP address, source port number, destination IP address, destination port number. So when a TCP segment arrives from the network to a host, the host uses all four values to direct or demultiplex the segment to the appropriate socket. In contrast to UDP, two arriving TCP segments with different source IP addresses or source port numbers will, with the exception of a TCP segment carrying the original connection establishment request, be directed to two different sockets. The server host may support many simultaneous TCP sockets with each socket attached to a process and with each socket identified by its own four fields. When a TCP segment arrives at the host, all four fields, source IP address, source port, destination IP address, destination port, are used to direct or demultiplex the segment to the appropriate socket. Unlike the previous image we studied showing UDP segments traveling from two different ports on two different hosts traveling to the same port on the third host, this one shows the incoming TCP segments from host A and C are being directed to separate ports on B. That's one difference between TCP and UDP. At the very least, the transport layer must provide a multiplexing, demultiplexing service in order to pass data between the network layer and the correct application level process. UDP does just about as little as a transport protocol can do. Aside from multiplexing, demultiplexing function and some light error checking, it adds nothing to IP. In fact, if the application developer chooses UDP instead of TCP, then the application is almost directly talking to IP. UDP takes messages from the application process, attaches the source and destination port number fields for the multiplex and demultiplex and service, adds two other small fields, and passes the resulting segment to the network layer. The network layer encapsulates the transport layer segment into an IP datagram and then makes a best effort attempt to deliver the segment to the receiving host. Best effort means it guarantees nothing in terms of making sure a packet gets to the destination. If the segment arrives at the receiving host, UDP uses the destination port number to deliver the segment's data to the correct application process. Note that with UDP, there is no handshaking between sending and receiving transport entities before sending a segment. For this reason, UDP is said to be connectionless. Remember our conversation about how a web client using HTTP determines the IP address of a destination host? It cannot use the domain name that we usually enter, but must convert that name to an IP address. So HTTP calls on the services of another protocol, DNS, to convert the name to an IP address. DNS is an example of an application layer protocol that typically uses UDP. When the DNS application in a host wants to make a query, it constructs a DNS query message and passes the message to UDP. Without performing any handshaking with UDP entity running on the destination end system, the host side UDP adds header fields to the message and passes the resulting segment to the network layer. 
the network layer encapsulates the UDP segment into a datagram and sends the datagram to a name server, that is a DNS server. The DNS application at the querying host then waits for a reply to its query. If it doesn't receive a reply, possibly because the underlying network lost the query or the reply, either it tries sending the query to another name server or it informs the invoking application that it can't get a reply. Now you might be wondering why an application developer would ever choose to build an application over UDP rather than TCP. Isn't TCP always preferable since TCP provides reliable data transfer service while UDP does not? The answer is no, as many applications are better suited for UDP for the following reasons. Number one, finer application level control over what data is sent and when. Under UDP, as soon as an application process passes data to UDP, UDP will package the data inside a UDP segment and immediately pass the segment to the network layer. TCP, on the other hand, has a congestion control mechanism that throttles the transport layer TCP sender when one or more links between the source and the destination host become excessively congested. TCP will also continue to resend a segment until the receipt of the segment has been acknowledged by the destination, regardless of how long reliable delivery takes. Since real-time applications often require a minimum sending rate, do not want to overly delay segment transmission, and can tolerate some data loss, TCP's service model is not particularly well matched to these application needs. These applications can use UDP and implement as part of the application any additional functionality that is needed beyond UDP's no frills segment delivery service. A second reason, no connection establishment. As we'll talk about later, TCP uses a three-way handshake before it starts to send data. UDP just blasts away without any formal preliminaries. Therefore, UDP does not introduce any delay to establish a connection. This is probably the principal reason why DNS runs over UDP rather than TCP. DNS would be much slower if it ran over TCP. HTTP uses TCP rather than UDP since reliability is critical for web pages with text. But as we talked about a little in section two, the TCP connection establishment delay in HTTP is an important contributor to the delays associated with downloading web documents. Third, there's no connection state. TCP maintains connection state in the end systems. This connection state includes receive and send buffers, congestion control parameters, and sequence and acknowledgement number parameters. We'll see later that this state information is needed to implement TCP's reliable data transfer service and to provide congestion control. UDP, on the other hand, does not maintain connection state and does not track any of these parameters. For this reason, a server devoted to an application can typically support many more active clients when applications run on UDP rather than TCP. And a final reason for its preference is that it has a small packet header overhead. The TCP segment has 20 bytes of header overhead in every segment, whereas UDP only has 8 bytes of overhead. As we expect, email, remote terminal access, the web, and file transfer all run over TCP. All of these applications need reliable data transfer service of TCP. Nevertheless, many important applications run over UDP rather than TCP. UDP is used for RIP routing table updates. RIP is a routing protocol for routing packets across a network. Since RIP updates are sent periodically, lost updates will be replaced by more recent updates, making the lost out-of-date update useless. Therefore, UDP is perfectly acceptable for that application. 
UDP is also used to carry network management data. UDP is preferred to TCP in this case since network management applications most often run when the network is in a stressed state, precisely when reliable congestion control data transfer is hard to achieve. And as I just told you, DNS runs over UDP, avoiding TCP's connection establishment delays. Both UDP and TCP are used today for multimedia applications, such as internet phone, real-time video conferencing, streaming of stored audio and video. All of these applications can tolerate a small amount of packet loss so that reliable data transfer is not absolutely critical for the application's success. Furthermore, Real-time applications like internet, phone, and video conferencing react very poorly to TCP's congestion control. What would you prefer during a phone conversation, a long pause in your conversation, or a short hiccup in a word or two? You probably see a few of those when you watch one of these videos. For these reasons, developers of multimedia applications may choose to run their applications over UDP instead of TCP. However, TCP is increasingly being used for streaming media transport. Most on-demand and live streaming apps use TCP. When packet loss rates are low, with some organizations blocking UDP traffic for security, TCP becomes an increasingly attractive protocol for streaming media transport. Although commonly done today, running multimedia applications over UDP is controversial. UDP has no congestion control. But congestion control is needed to prevent the network from entering a congested state in which very little useful work is done. If everyone were to start streaming high bitrate video without using any congestion control, there would be so much packet overflow at routers that very few UDP packets would successfully traverse the source to destination path. Moreover, the high loss rates induced by the uncontrolled UDP senders would cause TCP senders to dramatically decrease their rates. And thus, the lack of congestion control in UDP can result in high loss rates between a UDP sender and receiver and the crowding out of TCP sections. Before discussing UDP segment structure, I want to mention that it's possible for an application to have reliable data transfer when using UDP. This can be done if reliability is built into the application itself. Building reliability directly into the application allows the processes to communicate reliably without being subjected to the transmission rate constraints imposed by TCP's congestion control mechanism. Well, that was a pretty in-depth session, so we need to take a break now. Give you a chance to look over your notes, maybe rerun some of it, uh, make your updates to your to your uh, study guide, take care of any assignment that you may have waiting on you, and come on back for lesson four.